Today's video is a hands-on look at VPC peering, so you can start using it confidently and efficiently. We're starting in a fresh project here. When we click over to our VPC Networks page, you'll see a default VPC that comes with the project, at least if you haven't disabled that feature for new projects. We're dealing with a clean, lightweight setup here, complete with handy subnets for every GCP region. However, these carefully organized VPCs and subnets don't help us when we have VMs or other workloads spread over different VPC networks. Imagine having a workload in this default network, then creating additional networks and populating them with their own workloads. How can we get those workloads to interact privately and securely? This is where it gets interesting. Let's build this connection. We'll start by crafting a Compute Engine VM in the existing default network. Stick with the defaults for this VM setup, other than tweaking one detail in the advanced settings. Specifically, we're disabling the external IPv4 address. This step is helpful as it ensures our connections from or to this VM are purely internal and not exposed to the public internet. Now that our VM is live, we can smoothly access it using the in-browser SSH feature. From here, let's ignite a simple web server that we can use to test our VPC peering. Join me in crafting a file and using a straightforward Python HTTP server to serve a hello world index.html file from port 80. Now we're nestled comfortably in our default VPC, but how can we test connecting to this VM from other networks? Let's create a second VPC and a new instance that we can use to reach out to our original VM. We'll set up a new subnet in that secondary VPC, which will position in the same region as our previous VM instance. Selecting the IPv4 CIDR, we're essentially choosing the footprint of our network's IP space. So choose wisely. This should be something that isn't already in the other VPC to be peered, since the full mesh peering will require fully distinct CIDRs. In the default VPC, Observe how we're using the 10.0.0.0.8 private networking space, but we've only skimmed 10.128 and higher. For our shiny new VPC then, we'll select a range just beneath that range, and we'll use a 16-bit mask to give us plenty of IPs. When you're constructing a VPC, you're offered these shortcut firewall rules for allowing remote connections. Let's use these to enable SSH and then create the new VPC. Now, with our bold second VPC in place, let's get hands-on with a second VM. Just like our legendary first VM setup, we're altering one detail under advanced options and networking. Specifically, we want to avoid any public IPs. Then, just like that, we'll bring our second instance into existence. If we try to reach the first VM from this new instance, we'll see a connection refused. But that's exactly what we're expecting, a test failure implying that our VMs are unconnected, being on different VPCs. We'll also need to establish firewall rules that allow private access between the two VPCs. If we try to create that firewall rule now, we'll see that the rule will only apply to the primary VPC. These rules can't span multiple networks. Rather, we need to use VPC peering for the bridge and then a specific flavor of firewall rules on top. Head over to the network page, click on VPC network peering, and let's build a connection. We'll need to create a successful peering in both directions from the default to the secondary and vice versa. If you see this inactive status, that typically means you still need the bridge in the opposite direction. The big reveal. We now have an active VPC peering relationship between the two VPCs. However, if we retry the connection, we'll still see a connection refused. Why? 
firewall restrictions. Let's cement our understanding of what we've covered so far. So we've got our two Compute Engine VMs. VPC peering has created a full mesh network spanning both instances. We've thus mastered the VPC side of things, but we need to fine tune our firewall rules, enabling access between the VMs. The critical detail to remember in the firewall setups is that you can't use network tags or service accounts in your rules. These are specific to the network that you apply the firewall rule to and don't propagate across the VPC peering bridge. Let's demonstrate this. First, navigate to the firewall settings. We'll give birth to a firewall rule that allows HTTP traffic in the primary VPC. We'll use a tag-based approach on both the source and destination sides. Using HTTP, we'll specify port 80 and the TCP protocol. With that framework in place, let's update our VMs with their unique tags. Let's start by tagging our server, and the best part? No need to reboot the VM to attach the network tag. Hold on a moment, seems we slipped on a banana peel here. In haste, we used a special network tag that auto-creates a firewall rule, the HTTP server tag, which we'd rather sidestep. Let's rewind to our networking to avoid a fresh rule being drawn up. Quick alteration in our tag names and voila, we're back on track. Our connection is still missing its mark due to the use of network tags. Now, on to recalibrating our firewall rules using IP-based rules that will work across our peered VPCs. With those new firewall rules in place, we should be able to connect now.
Success! Behold, a Hello World HTML file served hot from our first VM instance and consumed by our second VM instance. Through our networking and firewall rules, we've successfully bridged the VPCs. We hope this video has been helpful and we'll keep an eye on the comments for any questions. Thank you for joining us and please enjoy responsibly.